Welcome to Timmy's Duelist Podcast. In this series, I'm simply going to read to you my favorite articles from The Duelist. It's been a while, but I am back with the series. I'm going to start with an article written in The Duelist number three. It's called, Excuse Me, Mr. Suitcase, Variations on a Theme Deck. Excuse Me, Mr. Suitcase by Paul Peterson. Now you've done it. It started out slow with just a starter deck and a couple of booster packs. Then, after reading a very interesting article, you bought a couple more booster packs to help you tune your deck, which, which has since become greatly feared. Your friend, Mr. Suitcase, offered to split a box of booster packs with you, and you agreed. By then, you had enough cards that you decided to go ahead and try to get a complete set. So, you bought another box. Then you needed a box for trading stock to get some out-of-print cards, and of course you had to get a couple of boxes of the new expansion for the collection. Now you've begun to notice that your biggest backpack doesn't even close, and you still only have the one well-tuned deck for playing. You also don't feel quite ready to build a tournament deck, you just want to have fun. Well, you've got all these cards, building a deck should be easy, but where do you start? Mr. Suitcase never seemed to have any problems. He has plenty of decks and they all look like they're fun to play. When you asked him about them, he said that they were just some theme decks that he was working on from amidst a half open pile of boosters. So what is a theme deck? A theme deck is any deck that is built around a specific concept. That concept could be based on a specific card or combination of cards or a certain type of card, or even something based on a book, movie, or something else entirely. A theme deck is not necessarily a lean, mean killer deck, built to totally eradicate your opponent in three turns or less. Instead, theme decks are generally designed to be fun to play. Not that winning isn't fun. Creating a deck built around a theme also helps improve your deck construction skills for other types of decks. You get practice at choosing good cards and combination of cards, and discover uses for cards that you hadn't previously noticed. You may find many cards that fit well into your deck that you've never considered using before, and others you usually rely on you may be forced to do without. You also learn how to use many different cards as effectively as possible. You could use one particular card as the concept for your deck. The object of such a deck is to use that card as well as possible, not only by using multiple copies of the card, but also by using cards that complement the concept card. As an example, let's look at the Rook Egg. It is a 0-3 red creature from the Arabian Nights expansion. If the Egg goes to the graveyard from play, the Mama Rook appears in your territory at the end of turn. She is a 4-4 red flying creature bent on revenge for the loss of her Egg. Obviously, you want to put in cards that will allow you to use this ability as much as possible, without making the deck boring. I guess I'll fireball Rook Egg again. Multiple Rook Eggs are important so that you can get them out soon and often. But what about getting Rooks? One possibility is to make your opponent kill your Rook Egg. As they will probably be reluctant to attack with creatures that could kill the Egg, you should encourage them. You could try begging, but Nettling Imp is probably a better way to do this. You can tap the Imp to force any one of your opponent's creatures to attack, and then you can block it with the Egg. Another strategy is to make the Rook Egg worth killing. The Red Enchantment Fire Breathing is one way to accomplish this. An O3 creature isn't much of a threat, but with Fire Breathing and a few mountains, it suddenly, it suddenly becomes dangerous not to block it. Ashnaut's Battle Gear is another great choice. The artifact from Antiquities can give one of your creatures plus two minus two, transforming the Rook Egg into a 2-1 creature. Now the Egg not only dies easily, but it also does enough damage to make it worth blocking. So, now you've successfully cast and killed a Rook Egg, and you have a Rook, now what? Obviously, you need to get the Rook Egg back, and there are many ways to do this. Raise Dead is a cheap way to bring the Egg from the graveyard to your hand, but Anime Dead is even better, as it brings the Egg directly into play, and Mama Rook is dumb enough to appear even if the Egg is undead. All Hallows Eve will bring all of the Eggs you've killed back into play at once. One of the best options is Hell's Caretaker. It allows you to sacrifice a creature in play to bring another creature out of the graveyard. Once you have a Rook Egg in play and one in the graveyard, you can just keep making them exchange places every turn, generating a new Rook each time. Try building a theme deck around a specific type of card. 
You might choose a particular kind of creature like goblins or a particular ability such as land walking or trampling. This is essentially very similar to the first type of theme deck, except for skill. Let's say you choose the Shivan Dragon to build a deck around and chose some cards that would help it. Most of the cards you added to complement the Shivan could probably be effective on a much broader basis. Expand the idea to be flying creatures and this will vastly increase the number of useful creatures in your deck. Also, most of them will be able to benefit from the cards you added to help the Shivan Dragon. What cards should you add? Choose cards that complement the theme you've chosen. The great thing about flying creatures is that they can only be blocked by other flying creatures, so you want to capitalize on this ability. The best way to do this is by making sure that your flying creatures remain unblocked, and this means dealing with your opponent's flyers. Earthbind is a good choice for this. If the foal does not kill the creature outright, it will at least remove its ability to fly and block your creatures. Winterblast is a fun little green sorcery that taps one creature for each extra mana you pump into it, making them unable to block. It also does two points of damage to each flying creature you choose to tap, which will remove any of the smaller flyers. Earthquake is another great card to complement the flying creatures deck. This red sorcery causes X damage to each player and all non-flying creatures and will kill most of your opponent's creatures while leaving yours untouched. The white enchantment mode is also effective, preventing any non-flying creatures from attacking, while your creatures go on their merry way. You can even develop a deck around a lack of a certain type of card, for example a creatureless deck. This can be difficult though, as playing without creatures deprives you of the game's most reliable way of dealing damage to your opponent. Obviously then, you will need spells that cause damage directly to your opponent. Red produces maximum mayhem, with more cards of this type than any other color. Fireball, Disintegrate, Lightning Bolt, Pyrotechnics and many more. Stormseeker provides some firepower for green, as does Psionic Blast for blue and Drain Life for black. Many artifacts can also damage your opponent. Black Vice and the Wreck are great passive sources of damage and the Rocket la Launcher is effective, but expensive. Not having creatures to attack, which means not having creatures to defend you. Luckily you already have a solution of sorts for this problem. Most of those cards that cause direct damage aren't picky about their targets and can be used against creatures as easily as against your opponent. Also, cards like Fog and Circles of Protection can prevent incoming damage. Fog will prevent all damage from all creatures involved in just one attack, while color-specific Circles of Protection will help over multiple attacks. You will need to choose cards to complement this strategy. Several cards deal damage based on the mana you can put into them, so find ways to increase your mana. Red has Mana Flare, which will double the mana available from lands. Green is also an excellent color for producing great amounts of mana rapidly. You can use Llanowar Elves, Birds of Paradise and Wild Grove to generate mana quickly, and Fast Bond and Gaius Touch to put lands into play even more rapidly. Theme decks can even be based on ideas that have nothing to do with the mechanics of magic, like a book, a movie or even an entirely different game. Take chess for example. The obvious colors to use are black and white. A chess deck would be very creature orientated. The challenge is to choose appropriate creatures to represent each piece, while still making the deck useful. For pawns there are many choices. For example, black has drudge skeletons and stone throwing devils, and white has banalish heroes and pikemen. Knights are easy, just use the white and black knights. They are thematically perfect and effective too. Walls can be used for rooks, with the wall of bone for black and the wall of swords for white. Bishops are probably the toughest to pick. There aren't many thematically correct creatures, but the Preacher, thanks to the dark, works for white, and Sengir Vampire make terrific black bishops. For the kings and queens, my pick is the Northern Paladin and the Sarah Angel, and the Lord of the Pit and the Sorcerer's Queen. Next, you need to choose supporting cards that fit the theme. Imprison is a black enchantment that allows you to prevent an opponent's creature from, uh, from acting, following the concept of check fairly close. Divine Transformation is an enchantment that gives a creature plus 3 plus 3 and is useful as a pawn promotion technique. All of these decks are fun to construct. There is a challenge both to planning exactly which cards you need to fit the concept and to trading to get those cards. You get a great feeling of discovering upon finding a new card to add to the deck or a new twist on the same theme. This also teaches valuable deck construction techniques that will help you in any deck you construct in the future. And besides, theme decks are also incredibly fun to play. There is nothing quite like watching your carefully crafted concept unfold 
over a course of a game. You'll be able to get the satisfaction of seeing the light dawn in your opponent's eyes as they suddenly realize that there is a method to your madness. You might even get a smile out of Mr. Suitcase. And this was the entire article, Excuse Me, Mr. Suitcase by Paul Peterson, and you can find it in the Duelist number three. Thank you very much for listening, and let me know how you feel about theme decks. Have you ever built a theme deck of your own? Would you like to do it? And do you actually still build your own decks, or do you always go online and try to find examples of the type of decks you would like to build? I would love to hear from you. Please leave a comment, and don't forget to like this video slash podcast right here on Timmy Talks. Ik het dus, ik het dus, zomba kazee!